Well, as, I, as I've been emphasizing from the beginning, these are psychosocial recognition categories. Uh, meanings uh, arise in the heads of people. Um, they are um, excited or focused or um, constrained by what is in the textual or the graphic artifact, whatever the communicative medium is. Um, but the, communi <coughs> the communicative medium is only serves as a prompt um, for some kind of mental event, cognitive event. So I think this is a, 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 the cognitive subject is a very important one. And in terms of teaching of writing, uh, you are you are looking to have students create meanings that they want to say, and those meanings. Uh, maybe in relation to the world around them, in relation to the society and their audience, but also they com come from within. What you, the person as a, uh, an individual subject wants to communicate to another person. Now, this uh, then suggests that uh, um, it is worth inquiring into what are the psychological processes by which uh, meaning is identified and brought into shape, located, received uh, by the others. Um, now, in given our emphasis over the last couple of decades in developing our, our more social historical theory, we, and uh, we've been uh, focusing more on, and I certainly much of my work have been focusing on um, historical cases, social interactions, the, uh, the emergence of common social understandings. Um, but now I'm returning to some questions uh, about cognition and I think people may be better qualified than myself uh, uh, should also be looking at the interaction between uh, cognition and genre. Uh, one of the difficulties I've seen um, in cognitive work to this point is that it uh, tries to identify cognitive uh, cognitive procedures um, apart from responsiveness to situation, uh, response, apart from responsiveness to uh, 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 social development um, and also interaction as, as uh, focusing the attention and focusing one's resources. Um, there's been a little bit of change in, in cognitive psychology now that makes it uh, maybe a little bit more welcoming to these ideas, particularly what's being discovered about the brain, um, which uh, suggests uh, not only is it plastic, but it's uh, uh, and grows over one's lifespan, but even in each event, it assembles itself differently around the event and uh, around the perceived uh, context. Uh, so uh, I think this is the right moment for us to raise the questions and in fact bring genre, typification, um, other ways of responding in an orderly way, in orderly ways to our social material, um, historical environment, the way that in fact uh, influences cognition and uh, genre is I think an important concept to be raised in that arena. I would just add to that that I, I, what I would be interested in emphasizing, which is that the the cognitive subject is socially shaped, and I think that we run the risk uh, in in putting too much emphasis on cognition in seeming to make meaning and genre as part of meaning as in, into a subjective phenomenon, and I would always want to see it as a social phenomenon. In other words, yes, it's in your head, but a very, very great deal of what is in your head got there from somewhere outside your head to begin with. Um, and I just, I just don't think we should lose sight of that, that that's what these typifications really signal is patterns uh, that are socially uh, perceived uh, and socially determined and that that comes from outside the, um, the individual subjectivity.